Hello everyone and welcome to uh, Comp Buddy. So I'm pretty excited to release my first After Effects script. I'm a longtime visual effects artist, uh, After Effects artist, uh, nuke artist as well. Uh, I think I've worked on about 28 feature films um, and visual effects supervisor um, as well. And just one thing that's bothered me um, about After Effects is there wasn't a uh, kind of native function for an edge blur or light wrap. Now, of course, there's some third-party tools that can handle that that are really expensive. Um, and then alternatively, you can kind of also, you know, build your own tools using the native effects inside of After Effects to accomplish those tasks. Uh, and that's what I did. Um, it's a little bit tedious uh, to do that manually kind of every time. So I thought, why not turn that into a script um, to make it just like a pretty easy one-button-click solution uh, for everyone um, and make it affordable. So that's what i did here and i just want to kind of preview it and and show you how to use it uh, so first of all you would um, install the script just um, like so install script ui panels and install it there i already have it installed here um, um so i already have it here so uh, we can get it a couple of different ways right so i can go to window here and bring up comp buddy just like that and now there's comp buddy like so now of course since i have this window i can i can dock this wherever i want right um i could just move it over here if i wanted to and make it real small so you could totally do that it's one way to kind of go about um having it in the interface and using it um so it's one way to do it uh you could also use um a really handy uh Tool that I recommend called KBAR, which you can also get on AE scripts. Um, KBAR is awesome, um, and you can easily integrate uh, Comp Buddy in here. And I got a little icon you can add to it if you want to do that. So you can also get it this way by just clicking Comp Buddy. It's going to pop up that way. So another way you can do it, like so, using KBAR. But we'll stick to this for now. So okay, so let's take a look at um, this uh, footage here for a moment. Um, basically it's just kind of a straightforward shot, right? Um, I have this actor on green screen, um, and then a photo I shot in Montpelier, Vermont. So if we just look at the original footage, just what we see here, right? Then have this, so it's kind of your basic little comp here, right? So I'm just going to zoom in, um, a little bit so you can see it, um, we're at hundred percent. I'll go just a little bit closer so we can see it. Um, and let's just give it a little edge play, right? So. You know, one of the really basic things when you're compositing, especially like a green screen comp or even adding CG elements to live action footage or maybe CG elements into a completely CG uh, environment, when you're adding these elements and kind of compositing things individually, you know, it's really nice to have a little bit of edge blur, right? Um, so that way it kind of blends a little bit better, right, with the background. Now, one thing that's important about edge blur and same with light wrap. Um, you know, usually less is more, um, especially with light wrap. <laughs> um, so let's just take a look, right? So let's add some edge blur to this. So I have my um, key, my layer that I want edge blur on selected. Um, and then of course, like that layer, you need to have an alpha channel. So this is a key and you can see what we have here. So with that layer selected, I'm just going to click edge blur. And you can see just like that pretty quickly. It all happened, and I'm actually recording this on a really old computer as well. So it all happens pretty quick. Um, so it might be kind of hard to see um, the screen recording this. I'll just zoom in, kind of get a more exaggerated view here. And now um, I have this uh, adjustment layer here, um, and also this layer here, right? Where I have the um, adjustments using the track mat. So Already, if I go to my effects controls on the adjustment layer, you see an edge blur um, with three on it. So by default, <clears throat> it's you know it gives you a, a pretty small blur. Again, um, you know less is more. So if I toggle on the on and off, it might be a little bit hard to see at this moment, but we can do some things to kind of increase it. You can see if you pay attention to kind of the edge here and there, uh, maybe around here you'd be able to see it too. But certainly around the hair, you can definitely see. As I'm kind of turning that on and off, you can see it, right? Again, that's pretty subtle, but still, like the devil's in the details, you know, what makes visual effects really sell are all those small little details. 
Um, so that's pretty nice. I mean, honestly, I, I probably wouldn't even do really much more on this one, but um, just to show you, we could come in, go to the edge alpha here, and we can make some adjustments. So um, by default, this edge width is at zero, um, but I could kind of increase my alpha here so I could do like a negative one. And that's going to kind of increase the width of this um, uh, edge blur. And I could also, so I have uh, levels here with just the alpha by default is 0.5. So if I increase the input white and make that maybe like 0.3. And even though I haven't, it's still on three for the blurriness, right? I haven't changed the actual blurriness. Um, you should see more of an exaggerated effect here. So if I turn this on and off, I think you can definitely see more of an effect, right? Um, if you just even just kind of pay attention around uh, the shoulders, kind of neck, and certainly the hair as well, um, you can see the edge blur is, is kind of going in more into the alpha, right? More into uh, the talent here. So we're getting more of that edge blur. Um, now on top of that, of course, I could also increase the blurriness of it, maybe like six pixels. Um, so now it's, you know, it's way too much because it's, using six pixels uh, for the blurriness and I kind of boosted up some settings over here. Um, but I could, you know, maybe do something like 0.4, keep it at negative one and maybe drop this to like four, turn that on and off. Again, you can see it pretty exaggerated. This where you know, zoomed in 400%, come at a hundred percent, can be probably hard to see on the screen recording, right? Um, but you can, you can kind of see like around here, right? Um, that edge blur is having an effect. Um, and yeah, it's just kind of helping you blend those hard edges, right? Um, into that background, especially when you have like a de slightly defocused background like this is, um, even more so if it's really out of focus, right? And you know, the goal for um, compositing like a shot like this is, you know, obviously we're trying to simulate how it would look if it was shot, right? So we're trying to simulate like real world camera properties, right? And, and how that actually looks shot from a camera and if we actually shot this from a camera you automatically get that edge blur right that happens for free like in the camera so it's just one of those things that we have to add um, later um, in visual effects when we're doing comps like this and I might even just drop that back down to three feels pretty good and maybe I'll even drop this to like 0.5 um, so something like that is pretty good so you saw though, like so right off the bat, right? Just by pushing the button, you got like an edge blur, um, a subtle one, um, probably for the most part for most shots, um, but you got one. I think when creating this tool, I also wanted to have um, the ability for users to have the control over it, right? So you can obviously control the blurriness here, but then also have some control over the alpha channel and kind of what you're doing um, and how much edge blur and, and kind of the width of it. Um, so yeah, so you do have that control, which is nice. Okay, and now let's take a look at using the light wrap function. Um, I'm gonna load up a different project for that. Um, just a project that's a little bit more conducive to an actual light wrap. All right, so here we are with another um, project file that I think is a little bit more conducive to a light wrap. Um, you know, kind of having this somewhat brighter background. So let's take a look and against the sky there. So let's take a look. Um, again, we have our foreground and a background here. And we could simply, um, obviously I already have it docked over here, so it's easy enough to do that. Um, but, uh, you know, typically when I'm working, I just kind of have it in my K bar over here and kind of use it when I need it. Um, I'll click it, but obviously you can certainly dock it like I have here too. So either way it absolutely works. So before we do the light wrap, let's just go ahead and might as well add a little bit of edge blur to this comp. So go ahead and click the edge blur button. Um, and there we go. We got a little bit, um, rather subtle at the moment so we can kind of come in maybe bring the input white to like a 0.4 maybe bring that to like 0.5 negative 0.5 and then the blurriness 4.5 and you can take a look over here and zoom in you can see how that is a nice blur around here Let's add maybe six to that. So again, you can kind of see get a nice, nice blur over here. Okay. So that feels pretty good. 
And now let's um, add a light wrap to it. So here's how we would do that. So just one thing to note before you actually use the light wrap button, um, you want to have whatever your alpha channel is. You, so in this case, it was a key, right? So um, I wanted to pre-comp my key. Um, so if I double click this for a second, you can look I for a pre-comp it over here so I could save, uh, you know, all the effects are in, in this composition, right? So if I come back to this composition, um, the key and effects are, are nested inside that now, right? So it's important to pre-comp it because um, we want um, the alpha channel to be seen by this light wrap process. So if you pre-compose it, um, if you're using a key, um, then that, that would work well. Um, if you're using just uh, some footage that just has a built-in alpha channel, um, you wouldn't have to do that. Or if you're using like um, something from CG that's just, again, rendered with the built-in alpha channel. But since we uh, actually keyed it to get the alpha, we want to pre-compose it. So that's one thing to note. Um, and then other than that, you just want to select your background. So this is our background here, right? So I designed the light wrapped um, script kind of uh, the most efficient way possible. You know, same with the edge blur of kind of how it works. Um, but, you know, because they are scripts, there are limitations um, not being like full blown plugins. Um, so uh, just keep in mind um, the layer you have selected right to run the light wrap on, for example, this background. When I run the script, it's going to add the light wrap layer above the layer um, above the background. So it's going to put it right above here, right? Um, and that's designed on purpose. So that's just um, so obviously it's going to put the light wrap above my key layer, right? Um, so you just have to keep in mind if you have lots of layers in between this, um, you might have to do just a slight bit of manual work to, to make sure to set it up. Let me just show you what I mean. So let's run the script here. So there's my light wrap, right? Um, and automatically uh, right above the key layer. And it's kind of all set up. And we're already getting the light wrap just like that. You can see it, right? <laughs> and that's all good. But I just want to point out, um, so this layer selected, right? Again, it's, the script's doing all this work for you, um, especially if you have it set up like this. Um, but you may have to, if you're not getting the light wrap um, correctly, one, make sure if you um, keyed and got your alpha and after effects, make sure to pre-compose it if it's not built in. And then the other thing to look at is just make sure that these controls are looking at the right layer. So if we look for take mat from, it says uh, layer four. And that would be my key layer. So that is correct, right? So that's just one thing to look, um, kind of pay attention to. Again, I will say my uh, default setting for this is, is pretty subtle. Again, um, subtlety is key with the light wrap, but you can just kind of see if I toggle on and off, you can see a little bit of light wrap happening, right? Now I can uh, increase it a little bit more. You can really see what's happening around the edges. I can zoom out a little bit. So obviously that's way too much. But you can just kind of zoom in a little bit. Um, and I just cranked it up to about 27%. And you can see getting some nice light wrap from the background. Um, I do have a, um, the ability to set up the glow as well. So if I want to add a glow effect um, with a threshold, you can see now that I'm getting a little bit more pronounced over here uh, with the glow on. You can see that right there. Um, so that can be useful and helpful as well. But again, you know. Uh, just be careful not to overdo those things. So if I were to maybe zoom in a particular area over here and then just take a picture and then turn off my light wrap and edge blur and you can kind of see like a before and after, right? With some edge blur and light wrap, what's happening there. Okay, let's turn the light wrap back on uh, and edge blur. And you have a few more settings uh, you can kind of play around with um, with a light wrap, in particular the glow, which I already showed. Um, then the other one that you could uh, adjust would be the diffuse spread. Um, so just for example, if I come over here, um, by default, uh, I have it on uh, 20, 20 pixels here, but you can increase that to like 40. And that's just going to cause the spread of the light wrap to kind of come you know, further out here as you see. So that's like a 40 right? and then go back down to 20. You can see it's not as, um, it's not as wrapping um, as much around the actual alpha channel, right? Or a talent. Um, so 
40 is actually probably pretty good in this case. It's just a little bit high there. Maybe like 29%. And you can see, right, with the light wrap on and off. And I could add the glow back on, get a little more, more pronounced. Yeah, this isn't really a, a flashy tool. It's kind of just, you know, kind of a, a workflow um, script um, meant to, you know, just make your life a little bit easier inside of After Effects uh, when it comes to compositing. Um, there are, uh, you know, scripts that I use uh, all the time on most of my projects that require, right, um, compositing like this. I uh, just recently used it on a, uh, on a big project. Um, and, you know, the cool thing about it is, um, at least for me, they're just kind of, it's using all the native built-in effects um, in After Effects. So it's just one of those things that uh, I wanted, um, you know, every After Effects user to have the ability to um, use some sort of edge blur and light wrap. Um, if, if they couldn't afford thousands of dollars for some other plugin, I wanted to keep it uh, affordable uh, for everyone. Um, but I hope everyone finds it useful. Um, and I do plan to have um, another a couple of tutorials coming out. Um, so stay tuned to that. Uh, one of them, I'll just kind of use it with a, a CG render. Just look at uh, blurring that edge. Um, and then another one, I'll kind of use it as a, um, I'll, I'll do something a little bit different um, with the tool um, as, as a compositing trick that I think will be useful as well kind of help with edges. Um, all right, well, great. I, I hope you enjoy it uh, and you get some use out of it. Thanks.